Hello everyone, welcome to Buildium tutorial for beginners. My name is Jana Cristo and today I'm going to show you how to set up your account with Buildium. Um, as I mentioned, Buildium is a property centric software. It means that everything starts and connects to the rental property. So naturally, the first thing you're going to do is enter your property. You have two options. If you have just a couple of properties, you can do it manually or you can also import a um, Excel sheet uh, from here. Um, and um, if you don't know how to do that, um, Billium has a good support. Um, especially if you're doing, if you're importing a lot of properties, definitely use their support team um, because it could get a little bit compli complicated. But for a couple of properties or if you're just starting out, it's super easy and you just do it from here. Enter new property, type of properties, it's all self-explanatory. Um, from here, if you're property manager, um, enter rental owner. Even if you're managing your own properties, enter yourself as a rental owner because um, all the tax information is going to, and the 1099s are going to be prepared using this information. Um, also, um, enter a bank account, op operating account here, um, enter the pre property reserves, and um, appoint uh, a manager uh, who is going to be the main point of contact for this property. So it's very uh, simple and the first thing you do. Okay, the next thing um, you need to do is set up the branding information for your property and your late policies, management fee policies, um, the appearance, I'm I'm just gonna show you how it looks like, but it's just mostly self-explanatory. This is the branding text uh, or logo. Um, I use branding text. I just do Rancy, um, and it's important to enter this because this is um, this is going to populate uh, your public-facing website. So make sure you do that. Here you can enter profile photos um, and um, web address, all of that. So, but I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's easy to do and it's very simple. I just want to point out some things that you may not think about when you're setting up your um, company settings and that's um, on the, this is where you enter the late fee policy, also self-explanatory. Uh, let me just show you. you, you do need to turn it on. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's uh, just follow the prompts. And what I wanted to show you, uh, if you are a property manager, is this the management fee policy. Okay, let's get started. So here you enter your, if, you, if you're a property manager, you enter your uh, fee. Let's say it's a percentage. And then um, this is the, the part that's important. Um, if you collect resident payments that are not shared, that you collect strictly because, uh, and the, these are probably fees that are application fees, fees that, of course, are not going to show on the rental owner uh, ledger because these are fees that you actually um, 
collect for services you provide and fees that you are going to pay to somebody else like you need to pay Belgium to screen tenants and all that and this could be uh, there could be other fees like late fees uh, late fee income it could be for homeowners uh, um, association violation um, I have a feel like that uh, because this creates more a problem uh, more work for us tenant pays for it and it has nothing to do with the um, the homeowner so if you have fees like that just uh, enter them here and also you collect those fees but you don't want to charge the owner uh, you don't uh, you don't want to charge them commission for collecting those fees so you need to exclude them from the management fee so um, so you let's say uh, you have you collect thousand dollars per month fee and you collect um, ten dollars late fee or like twenty dollars late fee uh, what this is going to do is exclude that twenty dollars and so you can charge you can collect your ten percent commission um, property management fee on top of the thousand dollars and not on top of one thousand and twenty dollars so this is important because it, you may have uh Ad advertising fees you may have other fees that are not um, part of your business you collect from the tenants but um, are not you don't want to charge the owner uh, commission on top of those fees so that's where you change that the resident services the two things that you need to set up in order to, for the software to work properly is the ePay. and um, just I, I just want to show you um, how to get started what you need to do is apply for a merchant account and it takes about 10 minutes to do that uh, and you do need a business account in order to be approved and the ePay merchant account is important because that's how uh, tenants pay electronically um, this is going to be used for payment of uh, application fees so you may want to set up this immediately when you're getting started Okay, um, the next thing you want to set up um, is the insurance, uh, tenant's insurance. And I just wanted to go over the things that are covered in the insurance. You do need to turn the um, ability of uh, the tenants to purchase policies and enter who's going to be named as insured on the policy and also reminders for the for the res, for the tenants if they don't purchase the policy immediately that they have to and you can set up like um, weekly monthly and also after the policy expires you they will get also notification to review to renew the policy and um, you can the basic policy is provided by uh, MSI and it costs twelve dollars and I just wanted to show you what covers so this is the basic uh, for the basic policy it covers property liability guest medical and emergency living expenses um, and fire, smoke, wind, tap, earthquakes, and also this is uh, water backup is one of the uh, additional coverages. Um, 
that's been lately included as a default. I mean, that's important because this happens quite often. Um, you know, it it, not often, but often enough so you can consider it. Um, and um, the if you include this, then that's going to be, um, this is actually included in the basic coverage. Uh, right now they changed that. So that's all. Uh, all you need to do is just turn it on, um, say, uh, just fill out who's going to be on the policy and turn on the reminders. And after, after you um, enter all of the properties, all the tenants, all the leases, if, if you, of course, um, are getting started, you're not going to have tenants or leases yet. But if you do, you need to enter all this information and the last thing you're going to enter is the opening balances right here. Right, right here. You can set up the starting date and just, I'm not going to go into it, but um, that's also very important to, to do. You can, um, you can also access this from accounting. But all of the steps are right here and it's easy to follow. Additional settings are, you can find right here on uh, this tab where it says setting and this is where you can set up the uh, the application settings you can assign user roles um, uh, you can import export data and you can see the users right now just one um, and from here, you can add staff members, rental owners, vendors. So Buildium allows you, you, you can add things uh, and access things from data from different places. So, but this is one of the places where you can do that. So that's it for today. Um, I just wanted to remind you, Doris, uh, if you don't have Buildium, I'm including a link to a free 14-day trial in the description below. Subscribe if you don't, um, if you're not familiar with the software so you can follow along better. And the next video will go over leasing, everything about listings, how to list and advertise a property, um, how to screen a tenant, how to accept um, a tenant and the, the entire moving process, how to uh, create leases, send and renew leases. So that's going to be the next video. So subscribe.